Why did Billy get fired from the banana factory? He kept throwing away the bent ones. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 action thriller film called John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. John runs through New York as time runs out on his grace period. He turns into an alley and sees the TikTok man, one of the Bowery King's spies. He gets into a taxi, but the roads are gridlocked. With only 20 minutes until he is officially excommunicado, he decides to get out and run again, but not before he gives the driver a gold coin to get his dog safely to the Continental. He arrives at the library and asks for a book, in which he reveals a hidden compartment containing some coins, a cross, a marker and a picture of him and his wife, which he kisses. A large man, Ernest, corners him in the bookshelves. John tells him he still has time left, but Ernest doesn't care. Who is going to know about a few minutes? The two have a fight, which culminates in John using the book to break Ernest's jaw and snap his neck. It leaves him with a bad stab wound on his shoulder, though. So, he visits the doctor at his home address, with only five minutes to go. The doc agrees to help, but has to stop stitching halfway through. The grace period is over. John's $14 million bounty is in full effect. After stitching himself up and taking some pills, John shoots and wounds the doc at his request to persuade the high table that the doc obeyed the excommunicado order. John leaves and is immediately set upon by a wave of assassins. They corner him in an antique arms shop, so John uses the old weaponry to kill them in a vicious series of fights involving all kinds of antique knives. John emerges into the street and is set upon by more assassins. They follow him into horse stables, where John uses the horses and their powerful kicks to kill several foes. He leaves the stables on horseback, but is followed by two men on motorcycles. John kills them both from horseback. John's bounty is raised to $15 million. John arrives at a theater, where he is told to empty his pockets and remove his belt. He meets with the director and asks for her help by presenting the cross he picked up from the library. They discuss John's history. This is where he was raised. She takes him to the back of the theater, past training ballet dancers and jiu-jitsu wrestlers, and asks him what he wants. He wants passage to Casablanca. She agrees, breaking all ties with him and branding him with a cross in the process. A mysterious woman enters the Continental. She slides a coin over to Charon, who informs Winston, the manager, that an adjudicator is here to see him. After asking to see Santino's body, the adjudicator informs Winston that he must step down from his position due to the fact that he allowed John to live after spilling blood on continental grounds. The Bowery King is visited by the adjudicator. He tells her that he is honoring the excommunicado. However, she informs him that no one is free from the high table's rules and that he must leave town because he gave John a gun knowing what it would be used for. He laughs in her face claiming that he cannot step down from the throne because he is the throne. John arrives in Casablanca. Almost immediately, he is set upon by three knife-wielding foes. One is killed in the battle but the fight is cut short by a man who informs them both that the manager has granted John amnesty. The assassin isn't happy and attempts to attack John, but the man shoots him. He and John go to Morocco's Continental Hotel, where John is taken to see the manager. He sees photos of a woman and her daughter, before two growling dogs come and stand guard beside him. The manager, Sophia, steps out of the shadows and shoots him in the chest. He falls to the ground, but his suit is bulletproof. She tells him she ought to kill him, but he presents a marker that she made with John some years before, as a result of John having rescued her daughter. She asks him not to present the marker, but John insists that she must take him to see her old boss. Reluctantly, she agrees. The adjudicator goes to a small sushi shop. The chef is Zero, who recognizes her coin and tells her he didn't expect her so soon. He already knows about John and is interested in hunting him down. The adjudicator tasks him with doing so, as well as going after all those who helped him. Sophia returns to John heavily armed. She hides a weapon on one of the dog's vests. John assures her he just wants to talk to her boss, but she's skeptical. They arrive at a complex and meet with Parada, Sophia's old boss. John asks Parada to take him to the elder the one who sits above the high table, so he can make amends. Barada doesn't know where he is but knows that the elder only finds those who he wants to find. He tells John to go to the desert and to follow the stars until he is almost dead, where the elder may or may not find him. Before they can leave, Barada demands a gift. 
He wants one of Sophia's dogs, but she is unwilling to give the dog to him. He shoots it instead. Unknown to Barada, it is wearing a bulletproof vest. John warns her against seeking revenge, but Sophia shoots Barada, and a fight with his staff ensues. The dog attacks Barada's groin. Once the guards are dead, Sophia shoots Barada in the leg, and the two make their escape, but more guards are on the way. They shoot their way out of the complex, with her dogs following her commands, and then make their way to the desert. In the theater, the director watches a ballet performance by her students. Meanwhile, her guards are being cut down by brutal but efficient ninjas. Three men walk on stage and interrupt the performance. The adjudicator and Zero approach from behind. She tells the director that her agreement with the high table doesn't allow her to help John. She agrees to show her fealty. The adjudicator requires her penalty to be paid in blood. Zero runs his sword through both her hands but leads her alive. John and Sophia drive to the desert. John pricks his finger and signs the marker with his blood. Sophia's debt is fulfilled. Sophia gives most of the water to her dogs. She swills the rest in her mouth before spitting a mouthful back into the bottle. She tells John that he is going to die, either here or later down the line. John walks into the desert with the bottle and she leaves. He walks across sand dunes for a day and a night before he collapses. In the Bowery King's complex, the ninjas brutally cut down many guards. Zero and the adjudicator approach the Bowery King on the roof. He tells the adjudicator that he is willing to show fealty, but she says that he has had his chance. He is defiant and sends his pigeon out of harm's way, before Zero deals him seven cuts as punishment for the seven bullets he gave John. The Bowery King falls to the rooftop. In the desert, a cloaked man comes across John. Then, John wakes up in a tent. He is face to face with the Elder, who informs him that he has never seen a man so lost. He asks him why he wants to live. John says it is to remember Helen. So the Elder gives him a choice, die here or come the Buddhaman again, remembering through death. He can never be out like he once was, but he can reverse the excommunicado. In exchange, he must kill Winston. John agrees and pledges fealty by cutting off his wedding ring finger and gives the ring to the Elder. The Elder accepts his pledge of fealty. He directs staff to help him prepare for passage back to New York and provides him with new clothes. Upon arriving in New York, John comes face to face with two assassins. However, they are cut down by some ninjas. The ninjas take John to see Zero. John and Zero are about to fight, but a line of school children interrupt them. John makes his escape, killing two motorcycle ninjas and taking a motorcycle. Zero and his ninja assassins chase John. On the freeway, while driving at high speed, John kills several sword-wielding opponents. Zero chases him into the city, but they both crash near the Continental. Since John has his hand on Continental grounds, Zero cannot kill him. Sharon takes John to a waiting room and Zero follows. Here he confesses how much of a fan he is. He tells John that they're the same, but John doesn't agree. John reunites with his dog, but tells him to sit and stay once Winston is ready to see him. Winston meets with John in a glass room used only when one needs to see what their opponent hides under the table. He knows John is here to kill him and prefers to be killed by a friend, but tells John that there is another way. He can pull the trigger and sell his soul, forever becoming the boogeyman and working for the high table, or he can stand and fight against the high table, eventually dying as the man his wife loved. The adjudicator arrives to see if Winston will step down. He will not. She asks if John will kill him. He will not. So, she declares the Continental deconsecrated. Business can now be conducted on its grounds, and both men are targets. Some of the high table's finest will be joining them shortly. However, under the circumstances, Winston sees it fit to reinstate all of John's privileges. He'll need guns. Lots of guns. John is shown to the arms room where he is told that the high table have improved their armor and is recommended a stronger caliber round. Winston locks himself in the arms safe while John, Sharon, and some loyal men go to fight the onslaught of high table goons. Their armor is tougher than anyone thought, so John has to get up close and personal. The adjudicator phones Winston, asking how long he thinks he can keep the defense up. He puts the phone down before she finishes speaking. Only John and Sharon survive the high table's first wave. They regroup in the arms safe, where Sharon introduces him to an armor-piercing shotgun. The second wave arrives and John makes quick work of them, the shotgun able to blow their heads clean off. 
The adjudicator phones Winston again and asks if a parlay might be beneficial. He agrees. John makes his way to the glass room from before, where he is attacked by two ninjas and thrown through several glass displays. Eventually, he manages to kill both using their own sword. He makes his way upstairs as Zero taunts him through the glass, but is attacked by two of Zero's best men. The shinobi get the upper hand and have the opportunity to kill John, but refrain from doing so to talk about the honor of fighting him. The fight resumes and they knock John down again. As he struggles to get back up, they discuss him being out of shape because of his recent retirement. John takes off his belt and prepares it as a weapon. After a protracted third round, where a tired John resorts to groin kicks and ear slaps, John is able to perform a slam on an opponent that shatters the glass ground and sends them all crashing to the lower floor. The shinobi can't get up but John can. He leaves to go and find Zero, who is on the upper floor. Zero and John have a long sword fight. Eventually, John gets the upper hand by using Zero's own disappearing trick against him. Even through he's badly bleeding, Zero keeps fighting until John shoves a sword straight through his chest. Worn out, both men sit together. Zero talks about how good the fight was and tells John he will catch up to him. He won't. As John leaves, Zero slumps to the side dead. Winston and the adjudicator are on the roof, having a parlay. She tells Winston that this was just the first wave, that more will come and that the Continental will fall. Winston retorts by claiming he could take the Continental back. His ties go deeper than these walls, he is New York. John arrives as the adjudicator decides Winston's show of power was a show of fealty. She reinstates the Continental and him as manager, but tells him that something must be done about John. Winston agrees and shoots John several times. The bullets bounce off his jacket but push him back until he falls from the roof, bouncing on various things which somewhat break his fall. Still, he hits the ground hard. The adjudicator is satisfied. As the adjudicator leaves, she decides she needs to check John's body. She re-enters the Continental and tells Winston the body is gone. She tells him that they do not want John Wick coming after them. Winston agrees and whispers Baba Yaga. The TikTok man wheels a cart as John's dog follows. He tips a battered and broken John out of the cart, who rolls to a stop in front of a makeshift throne. On the throne, drinking a soda, is the Bowery King. He is cut up quite badly and tells John to raise a hand if he can hear him. John's three-fingered hand goes up. The Bowery King talks about John's betrayal and the high table's rules. He mentions that more things get done under the table that he's really pissed off. He asks John if he's pissed off too. John slowly raises his head. He's bloody and has a messed up eye, but he can still answer. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy at the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.